Hello, good people. It's Paxton. This series is called From Behind the Drum Kit. It's an interview series where I interview musicians and artists about their life and their process. Today's guest just released his second solo effort, Anada, along with a companion book. <clears throat> He's the singer-songwriter of the Trainwrecks, the ubiquitous Savannah Staple. <clears throat> also one of my friends and lover of feet, Mr. Jason Bible. Welcome to the show. Thank you for coming. It's good to be here. How you doing today? I am doing very well. <laughs> now, Anata, so this is new album with companion book, and you wrote it with Dave Williams. Yeah. We, I was lucky enough to be the drummer for the album release at the Tybee Post Theater. But uh, I want to get to, so uh, you also released another solo album with another companion book, Annika. Yeah. Right? Yep. Yeah. Um, the process between you and Dave. So Dave Williams, if people don't know, he's sort of like your Robert Hunter writing partner. Yeah. In some I sort just, of way. Like, he's uh, li he, lyrics. Yeah, we work on a lot of stuff, and uh, stuff gets, if I get a verse, I can right. send him that. And tell you, how do we finish the story? <clears throat> yeah. He'll give me some options, and we'll bounce that back and forth till we get something. Has it ever been him sending, like, was El Cartel, which is one of my favorite train wreck songs. I don't know yeah. if you guys heard that was, you listen. Was yeah. that sort of like a, a uh, uh, lyrics first yeah yeah and he kind of wrote like the idea of you know kids right. growing up in the way of laredo right um that was all lyrics first there were some words maybe taken out of that but no real edits made um that was just sent and i was like i got it was kind of ready to go and right away the, the first um the first demo is how it is i mean it's pretty close to i think that bridge man the little bridge part was added but yeah i knew i wanted to do the spanish if you're going to use that progression, you have, like, one opportunity to use that. Yeah, oh, the, 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 the half-step bomb. The yeah, 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 yeah. I was like, if this is that one, that song, <laughs> I'm going to use that for it in all these years. That, that That's that's the Well, the and especially song, so. since it had, you know, the story is about cartel kids in Mexico, you know, or right. just, like, the life right. of it. So if you right. can use a little Spanish-twinged yeah. guitar thing. Right. So right. with um with Anata and Annika, was it a story developed and then music written to it in terms of the book versus the album, or or did you have some ideas for songs, um, and then it gets at you know you send the ideas to Dave, yeah, he yeah. fleshes them out a little bit. The, the the first one the book was done, and I went back and and um, we needed to title the chapters so that the chapters got titled, and then the songs got written. The second the so that was a whole different way of okay moving. well yeah we'll get um, to that well so we'll do a nada first though. Yeah. so nada yeah. was uh more of a comprehensive thing both of you guys deciding things together right right yeah it was um that was uh a pretty quick process with getting um i think some of the demos i had we used on a couple of the songs and then uh some of it was just writing off of the chapter and already having a title for the song or yeah. a working demo and then fitting that into the book so we kind of move that way with so, so they're like both a, totally different processes really it, it was like a prompt though mm -hmm. because I, yeah. i've noticed as well if 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 i'm asked to produce something right. and i have some sort of right. prompt or window or idea or right you know vision it's much easier to pop out right but you're pretty prolific already when it comes to writing a lot of songs you know so was there any um carry over between like stuff you already kind of like at least rhythmically like guitar stuff you're like oh well i got something yeah. that sort of yeah fits this a little bit i think uh there was uh the ring which is the real slow kind of yeah lucinda williams influence ballad um that one was a i had a just a, a garage band demo of, of a baritone acoustic and um some stuff and that that's what i used the words over Right. Initially, it was like this. This would fit that puzzle piece, that mood, group, and yeah. it's in the key of B. I hadn't. I think I've written one other song in B major. So I was like, this. Oh, so, the, so is it, does that enter your mind? You're like, oh, I haven't done much in a B major I'm, key. At this point, after 
30, after, 31 years of playing yeah. the, the, the GCD, <laughs> right, G, yeah. DC, um, trying to ch move around keys and tune down a half sure. step or whole step. or yeah. um, That's what the next one's uh, I'm gearing up to, you know, do the make sure that their third one's completely so was this meant to be a trilogy from the beginning yeah. or yeah. just an open-ended thing oh uh, it's a tri it's a trilogy oh and then, sick okay yeah. so i so, yeah I, I i didn't know that so okay. uh, the last principle is, is, is uh duca i believe uh -huh. it's, uh, it's, it sounds a little too much like dookie so we're, <laughs> we're just going to call the third one suffering which is what it what, uh, okay, what it that, means. So okay that one um i was a little fr afraid to, to get going on that one immediately I was like this is too much Right, yeah, it's, it's like so emotionally it's, taxing a little it's bit. It's going to be a power pop type, really. Band, okay, yeah. Band record. Um, well, to on juxtapose Anata, the there's sadness. a little bit of that yeah. twinge, you know, because when I went to go do the rehearsals with you, right. some, uh, you know, there's always been a Tom Petty influence, you know what I mean? Right. But this time, but on Anata, when I was starting to learn the songs, there was like a, a cult, the cult influence, like the Cure, you know, yeah, like yeah. Eight, 80s ish, like pop yeah. sensibilities, right. but like with an Americana, like sort of undertone yeah. was that just, so the third out the third album are you focusing more towards that power pop sort of thing um yeah you know i'll probably have you if you want to play some live drums sure, on of it. course uh, you know. and i think i'm gonna try to do the third one where the songs are run through maybe once figure out what where things are at and just cut a couple versions of it cut it don't go over three takes with yeah the, with and make sure it's on the floor and it's really live because it's, yeah, piecing stuff together afterwards is is so you is, can get muddled down and because if I record something and I listen to it a thousand times and I think I can tweak it a million times. Right, right. There's a um a really great punk band that I love. They're called No Effects. Yeah, and they yeah. you know they're thirty albums in now. Yeah. So finally they got so good at recording and like being so tight that they were like, you're learning the song today and we're recording it today, and right. that was literally just yeah. a prompt for them to right. figure. And it's just like tuning a guitar down. Right to give you a different, you know, uh, idea or, a, or a feel of it. Yeah, so I like that idea. Cause it, it you, so I kind of moving, idea, yeah. it's, it helps you move creatively. And then when you play it live, it's, you know, one or two shows live. And so it's not something you want to, uh, like you know, I don't, I don't want to overthink it. Um, and, and if just, everyone's feeling good that day, whoever's playing on it, yeah. there can, some real magic can happen. Yeah. And you had a lot of really great players on this yeah kyle kyle uh, helped a lot with that one yeah uh, he did a great job with subtractive production because he would on the first track he wasn't he was letting like, you go wild with all well, with did. the 100 overdubs well yeah he, 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 would, <laughs> he would say like you need to lift that chorus up on the first track so he left and i think i did eight guitar tracks like a, a the, that cobain jaguar through a marshall good god and then i did 12 strings and he came back over the next week and we listened to it and said, how many guitars i soloed this <laughs> this whole bus of, of of eight guitars and he's like pick, you need to pick one you <laughs> know like, what are you um, the doobie brothers how many guitar players yeah. are you gonna have in this traveling yeah. band <laughs> i figured you know since, since it, it it was during the, the you know i couldn't get a, a group over the house so it, it had to we had to move uh where it was mainly me and him in the room yep. and then Dave working on words with us. And uh, there was, there were like four songs that were fully tracked that we cut, yep. which was kind of one of them. I was very glad that we cut okay. and rewrote something, which is how things you remember came out. Oh, wow. Okay. I yeah. worked on a loop with some drums and kind of got that loop and then um, translated that. And, uh, and then the, what's wild about that song is this, the scratch vocal. The first, I got the lyric sheet. Arm the seven B sat there, <coughs> cranked the monitors, just no headphones, and just that was that's the take on the record. Was the really? first I couldn't have, I d it didn't say like say bring it back that many times. It just it seemed like yeah, the yeah. right move to do. And um, I knew when I saved that that night, um, and we got the guitars done, yep. and I sent it to Jeremiah. I think immediately mm -hmm. uh, the next day, I said. This is the video song. This is this is it. Right, it's yeah. three chords. It doesn't move a whole lot. It's kind of a, yeah, but it's got a push you know, to it. I believe you know yeah. uh, when when I first heard it to rehearse, I was like, this is pretty great because a lot of it. Um, I know it had, I think it had been on Spotify for a little bit. Yeah, but coming over for the rehearsals, yeah, the the day or two before were the first time I, I heard most of those things, and I was like, this is this is really great. And so you kept that first take. The vocal, yeah. How many did you did you tr did you do a thousand takes after that? And you're like, well, I, well I shit, didn't. I might. Okay, I sent it to Anna, and she yeah, sent yeah. back her <clears throat> her okay, vocal. Okay, so and Anna was singing a lot of harmonies on remotely. this, and you guys did it remotely. Yeah, right. So she was in South Carolina, up by uh, she's living, I think, by Columbia, 
um, somewhere up there. Uh, and uh, so I would just email. She's got a mic in a, in a room and a, some Well, nowadays, if anyone has a decent setup, you can right. toss right. back and forth and get right. good sounding and recordings. There was only one song we had to rework and yeah. um, steer it a little differently. But everything she sent, I just flew it in. Yep lined it up and it was ready to go and so see the was, people you choose to work with too like as you mentioned kyle you asked yeah. him to be a part of it because you knew in some sort of sense there'd be a production aspect to it where he would say hey we don't need eight guitars on this part right and if you send your vocal takes to uh, another singer with a different sensibility right she was like hey this this works this doesn't you want that input from your collaborators yeah if that's yeah i don't know that if she would have been in the room with me if we would have done the same kind of singing we did on this record. Right. Because we were in the room. Um, yeah. But, but that's cool. I mean, there's it, the difference between yeah. the two, and that's great. Yeah. And, I, and that's, that, that, that was the goal, is like yeah. to do three three things. And the first one was based on two real cases. Oh, right. Um, okay. That Dave had, well, he, yeah. we had worked with. Yeah, um, gotcha. So the second one's kind of a carryover and in, uh, invented characters. But the first one is like, pretty much it's, it's stuff that actually is going on stuff that's happening with opioids and right, pill yeah. mills and things like that that uh people are running like yeah. at a nice you know couple million dollar house in the suburbs you think and gated that's really a like a yeah a, 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 a filed you know the, 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 these this many people are going to these states to get pills and yeah because um i mean they, they call it back. pill like pill alley or something down in broward florida or something like that they have yeah. the pain the pain clinics I remember seeing that man and down you there. Walk you walk in, you go, my back. Yeah, my back hurts really bad. Yeah. Oh, is it a ten? Yeah, here's yeah. two hundred oxys. Right. You, you open the connect, for instance, in any uh -huh. city down there, and it little fat last five or yeah. six pages are yeah. pain clinics. So you go in there with a couple hundred bucks, and and uh, so that would get would have gotten me into get anybody in trouble. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, yeah, I get no, no pain at all. So right. Um, and there's a few states that have it like that, where the yeah. guy off the street. You you talk to a nurse and this is air quotes right and she goes what's your pain level and then you just get a script right there and then you drive back to Ohio with yep. a five dollar twenty milligram oxy and you sell it for yep. twenty but you know whatever yeah. it's a high profit thing right so is addiction uh, sort of a, a through line through this through the story or it, just like it the, is it's yeah a, I mean it's a part of it at least yeah the the second one is a social worker um, that's uh, his. Last name's Klein. He names his daughter Patsy, and nice. he kind of so there's some. He loves country music, and he you wouldn't think he would like country music with his background and everything. And um, that one um, moves a little differently. That that has um, you know the suicide in, in the book, and it's yeah. got a um, you know so he, it, he the the same thing he was trying to help people get out of pulled him in yeah which happens a lot well with, you with, see when you with, surround yourself with certain things like that it's hard not to get pulled in right and even if it's a positive thing you know if you're around right. yeah. folks that are doing doing well right you know whether they be musicians or skateboarders right people that are better than you or that who are doing well make you better or right people who are shitty make right. you a little bit worse yeah. well i like the idea of the three albums having the three different sort of approaches not necessarily just to the songwriting but to the recording process yeah, because um, and they all sound they, they all sound great. The thing is, I just know that during the pandemic, just like anyone else who has a studio at their house, the endless tinkering can become a problem. <laughs> yeah. So I can the worst songs on there that the tink like um, the demo for uh, what's the name of the song? Let me see. Um, Never worthy that one. Right. So I recorded it. I went ahead and just did. I knew it was a duet. Yeah. And we talked about it being a duet and I recorded the whole thing and um, I tinkered with the, the swing and the feel of the drums mm -hmm. and, and stuff to the point where I listened to it recently and thought I should have just cut the drums and made it just a guitar kind yeah. of like the, the um, a ATV on the Anita uh, not Anita Anika record <laughs> um, oh, I've that, that was Anika cut there, that, so it's Anika gotcha. I think so that that was cut um, me and Anna did that in the room we did I think three takes and the second take we kept and and that was sometimes it so just works like that it yeah. might not have had you know it might have been good to have the drums in there but um it could have it, that's the song i played pedal steel on and that that took me yeah a while well um, if it's something that's uh like decorative like a pedal steel you know what i mean right right but that rhythm guitar and the and the drum and the bass track you know right. a lot of times right just you can get it done if if yeah. everyone's feeling good that day or if you're you know yeah or you yeah. get it's weird songs either get recorded in five minutes or 50 hours 
Well, it also has like I saw um, drive by truckers during, maybe before everything. And did that inform the and way you? There were was one to... song that I re- I wrote when I got back yeah. from the show. Pretty used to usually do it. that. You yeah. know? Oh, hundred percent. And so, and it was it was I need all your mythology. It was a mythology type of thing, and um, I would mix it back, mix it over and over, and I added so many things to it. And uh, I'd go in the kitchen and I'd talk to Gentry. She's like, "That's not going to be on the record, is it?" I was like, "Yeah, it's it's the chapter seven or whatever." And, she said, I think, I think you, you're singing that chorus a little too many times. It had too much. I was trying to hook too much with a yep. chorus. It just needed three instead of maybe five. Oh, you're just pu- putting in chorus. I like, need all your mythology. But it had, that, it had that Patterson Hood kind of oh, gotcha. gravel. Oh, so you could tell whiny, that you were you a little tell, bit. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, that's it kind of once the, the record started to have a feel, it stood out. It too stood far out. It, was a, yeah. it wasn't. Um, I'm glad that because that pushed me to. To, to, to write the things you remember. Well, uh, even thing. on like Trainwreck albums, I'm sure like there was a lot cut, or maybe uh-huh. as much cut as there was that yep. made it in. Yeah. And like I said, yep. just, but just because of how many songs you write. When, and right. I'll go ahead and uh, tell the story then because the reason I wanted you to be my first guest was uh, I'd played in bands a lot growing, you know, in, around town or whatever. And all my, all the guys that I played with normally, every, their, they were more concerned with like, okay, how much are we getting paid? Are there going to be chicks there? Are there going to be drugs? But right. um, you know, are we going to get laid? Yeah, the shit beer. like that. Yeah, you right. know, hey, I which get are it. important things? Those are very <laughs> important things. Those inspire and inform right. the music that right. you make. Right. But and I like all of those things too. But I also like to I don't know fucking play the drums and be yeah. a musician in some right. sort of way, write songs, whatever. Right. So, um, I live with my old roommate, the Nick. Uh, he's a, a wild man, yeah. or was a wild man. Now he's, he's a wild 14 baby children? hammer. Yeah, Four, 14? He, he, he just hit 14. Oh, uh, yeah. Nick and Kate plus 14, as <laughs> it were. But um, Divided by, is it, how many, is it six? It's a lot. Six? Well, it's five, yeah. Five? Yeah, it's, oh. it's honestly oh. five children, yeah. Woo. And they're all really well behaved, which is That's, which is weird because he yeah. was not in his heyday. And in the right. time that I'm talking about right now, yeah. so he and I had a house called The Manor. And it was yeah. all manner of fucked up in there. <laughs> right, right. So you had played a gig at Huckapoo's. And I don't know if it was train wrecks or solo or something like that. But you adjourned to Nick and I's house with us. Nick and I were partying like like we were the ones that played the show. And at this point in your life, you had you know quit drinking. And yep. that wasn't your life anymore. And we're sitting there. And you probably did a two-hour solo set in the dark. For us, music I'd never heard before. And each time you got done with a song, you weren't looking up for adulation or someone to clap for you or some girls to throw their panties at you or to put their feet in your b-hole. And I just remember over that entire time. And then at the end, I said, hey, what was that? You're like, oh, it's just a bunch of songs that I wrote. I was like, well, goddamn. Yeah. So I was like, this person, no one else that I ever knew in the world of music would have done that if there had to, if I if I hadn't been cutting out. Yeah, you know. I, I think I think Nick had a video camera in there. One of you guys did. Maybe and you were you played drums too. We played. I think you played drums. I mean, I know we had. A I remember he had a, a cabinet. Yeah. And I saw the cabinet. I was like, I'm getting my pedal board. I've got the pedal board telly out. Yeah. And I think you got on the drums, and we might have done like probably an album's worth of just jam- of just improv yeah. with vocals. And, and it was amazing. And and it was just us there. Yeah. We weren't doing it, you know. Yeah, the, it was probably a full moon. Yeah, it was probably had so, yeah. had some uh, some lunar yeah. uh, effect. But maybe. that was long before I ever joined the train wrecks. So okay. then, yeah. d- like a year later, when you were like, "Hey, do you want to play?" I was like, "Fuck yeah, I do!" Because yeah. Yeah. if anyone gives a shit about music, you know, and it's nice to work with people like that. Absolutely. So, uh, well, so now, now we can go a little bit back to the beginning. Uh, when did you get to Savannah? Let's see. I moved here in uh, uh, February fourteenth, two thousand one. Oh, Valentine's Day! So I left. Day. I nice. left. I left Denton, Texas, and uh, I got out here. Um, I'm glad I did. Uh, really what were your um, What was your toe dipping into the Savannah River waters of playing around here? Well, I took. I had like a brief. Ca- I'd come out of Hotel AV. Okay. Right, so I had my the only nice suit that I had, and like my railroad boots from the working on the railroad before that, and I would go down the River Street with the guitar case and um, my briefcase, if you will, um, full <laughs> full of resumes, and it was for sound and gigs, whatever. So I thought, well, I'll go to every restaurant and whatever. And so I remember the first audition I did was at Huey's. I saw Greg Williams and Huey's downstairs. They used to have music right there by the bar. Okay, yeah. They had a PA set up. I was like, great, they have a sound system. And 
And I, the, I went in there one day. She's like, "Come back Monday, whatever. Do do a do a, do a live a live uh, thing." So, like a, she, a running audition. sound live. Or no, she, she just said, "If you want to play, you you can play this 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 afternoon. The, the owner will be back, and they can hear you play. You can play a half hour, forty five minutes, whatever, um, for the tourists going by, whatever." So I sat at the bar and I waited and I waited and I'm throwing them back, pretty pretty. <laughs> and um, uh, Jeremy and Stephen Riddle work there. Okay, the so they were, got to, he was yeah. a waiter. I think Stephen was in so the kitchen. So if you're familiar, Jeremy and Stephen Riddle, <coughs> local musicians. Well, yep. um, Stephen's yep. out in California now. Yeah, he's yeah. in uh, Durham, I think, Raleigh. Maybe. Oh, okay, gotcha. maybe he's moved a but lot. But Jeremy's still here, though. Yeah, he Jeremy's here. He's, yeah. he's playing all the time. And so um, he, J- Jeremy would tell you the story. He uh, so I, I, I'm pretty hammered. I get up there. By the time I get up there, I'm like I'm four or five, six beers, and I'm like with like a bowl of crackers and some soup that I had earlier. <laughs> And, Paying um, for all the beers too because it wasn't free. Oh, beer oh yeah, you weren't, yeah. You weren't the just guy yet. Hoping that they would comp, hope, 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 <laughs> hoping they were going to comp it. Basically, if I if I played, like, oh, I'm about to play my ass off. Yeah. Get all the beers for free. Yeah, right. Yeah, that that, that was kind of the mindset, and uh, and so I got to the point where I think I got maybe two songs in, <laughs> and I think I was doing Mary Jane's Last Dance or Last Dance of Mary Jane. Classic. And uh, trying to you know make sure they you know that I secured the gig and. Uh, uh, it didn't go very well. I, I don't think I was even singing in the right key at that point, and maybe one eye was closed, and maybe sweating in this suit, right? And it's, it's like this. It's you know, it's maybe March at that point, and uh, You're like Savannah, um, in March, I'll be fine. Oh uh, yeah, suit. It's, it's like a wool, like stupid, you know, suit. I hate suits, and uh, so th- they just told me. Uh, I think. I, I think Jeremy has more of a detailed account of it, but uh, that was just told to kind of just like, go we've on. Heard enough? Yeah, just okay. You turn that PA off. I think they might have turned the PA off. So you it was kind of notice that they turned the sound. Yeah, off I'm still. Yeah, I'm still. <laughs> I'm, I've got loops going. You know. Yeah. Um, so that point. <laughs> at that point, I, no, I don't think I did it. Did that, but then I so I moved down the river. I saw. I was like, well, we'll see what happens there. So I went to yes. Bernie's, uh-huh. and uh, I used to play there as much as they would allow uh, <laughs> with a, they had a PA system. I hadn't gotten my PA system uh, oh, yeah, money to get a system. It was a dream, baby. Uh. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, so I went down there and they, they said, yeah, you can, you know, um, play before karaoke or whatever. And so I did that. Opening and, um, for karaoke. Yes. Humbling. Go. And then they gave me a Thursday. <laughs> they gave me a Thursday night. And they, this, they had a PA and a little like railing around the stage. And um, that went on for a while. And it was a pretty steady thing, and so that was um, uh, a good place uh, to start out. You so, know, it that, right but now. it was an audition-based thing. It's, um, At that point, the, there were a lot of military still here. Yeah, and so you yeah, would get rowdy. Is really well, luckily rowdy. word didn't come from Huey. He's like, "Hey, there's this guy that's going to get real wasted." Yeah, and yeah. Then, uh, well, I burned the suit and kind of, <laughs> you know, I I went and did a did a you change. Shaved, changed I, your I bought a tourist hair. hat and went, went you know, <laughs> got um, a Tommy Bahama shirt. On. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it, it took a minute to figure out that um, there was a system of booking going on. Yeah, I saw Bucking Berry in the market, and I was like, "That that right. looks like a good gig." So, yeah, um, and those are the better paying ones normally. Anyway. Yeah, and I, I realized I can't just go hand them. A, I need to get to know them. Kind of the good old boy system. I need to kind of get so to you know them. So you have paper them. resumes, like uh, I, I had know. full like my <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> the studios I worked for in Dallas, <laughs> the internship I did for uh, Aaron Norris, Chuck Norris's brother, the, the Rage Within oh, yeah, it was a course. film that never even came to market. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I, I was working. Chuck's with, a badass. Then, <laughs> so then I got I got a job at SCAD um, during playing those. Uh, gigs i got a job at scad doing av audio visual stuff for them and it was more like moving tvs and setting up an overhead projector here you're like a substitute teacher babysitting paula wallace's lavalier mic and her little mini podium that she brings around and it was soul crushing i did that for you know my parents were stoked because they were like it's insurance it's oh right you work for a university at at that point and uh, and so i did that for eight months maybe and uh-huh. I, I had to get back to playing you know um so you weren't you so weren't playing a lot at all during that point at that point i had decided that it was so easy to drink in savannah i needed to do a day like a routine i needed i needed my day shift yeah. and to get back home uh, and i would gotcha. go to i would go to cagney's open mic yeah and pick up you know just play three songs there and try to get in booking to playing there and that's I, where i met a lot of people i was gonna say i think most um, people especially in savannah or it, i mean any town that has a music scene honestly yeah. if you're new in town you just got to go to open mics and if you're yeah. good someone's gonna yeah. be like hey i play bass or drums right. or then whatever. it moved to like like bay street blues bonnie kind of yeah. took me under her wing she's like i'll feed you i'll give you draft beer yeah 
and you can again open for karaoke play like open three to <laughs> three to like seven right and then yeah. when everybody say and so i did that and and um at the time savannah you know it was good that there was something on bay street like a vi- like cagney's yeah you know and um uh again it gets pretty foggy yeah with a lot of that but um well how long uh, between so you're an open micer you're you're blowing a few gigs you got a few right. good gigs whatever uh have you started writing songs that would become train wreck songs at that point when i i left texas and i went back in april of 01 with i think 300 dollars cash and i went to a studio in dallas called free spirit studio this guy had and his name was ray sanchez and it was purple foam maryland maryland and row photos purple and gray foam it was he built the whole thing from the ground up it was grounded it was yeah. close to the airport so he had grounded it. He went to MIT for engineering. He was a drummer for years and like the blues rock blues band thing in the 60s, late 60s, 70s. And he so he 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 had everything in that room, a piano, mic, drum kit, mic, all the pan percussion everything you can imagine from all over the world. So yeah. he kind of um, if it was 25 bucks an hour. So I went in there in April, I think it was maybe April 4th or something or 5th. I went in there with maybe 100 bucks left and I told him I have to do a record tonight. And he said, well, okay. And so wow. we, 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 I went in there and I did um, 14 just guitar harmonica vocal songs. One take. Singing to the can style. Right, yeah. right. Just, just, just on, you know, he had a little glass ISO room and set me up with some good mics. I did, so I did Embracing Imperfection. That was the first full length, full length record yeah. that I, I had ever done because I'd been collecting these songs and writing and visualizing doing this full record i wanted to capture that stuff. so it was just guitar and harmonica though that, just, that, there's I, that one i didn't do anything before i moved you had 100 here. bucks and you had four hours yeah and, and he let me do it so that's and he, cool and yeah. he, he threw in the mix for free and whatever and uh, but that's before like, yeah. that i had gone over there to do a song for my sister's uh senior thesis senior thesis film uh we did a full band song there so i knew him and i'd done a, an ep there and how were you how old were you at this time um 19 okay Gotcha. 18 19 tw- yeah somewhere in there maybe yeah 20 uh, um but yeah he he was a good mentor c- instrumental in figuring out the studio because he had a cd burner i was like wow Whoa. so we went to one inch tape and i got i got that you could CD. walk away with a cd yeah so i got that cd and then i came back here and Chris, crystal clear sound did a th- three three hundred copies of that with just the text like the, yeah, no yeah. art at yeah, all yeah. just the text so I, I i sold those around town and um um, did that? Did having that, re- you know, put on record, give you a little easier entree into getting absolutely gigs yeah. around town? It helped. Like, hey, here's I'm it, not going to sit at the bar and get wasted and then <laughs> yeah. demo these. Yeah, here's things a resume. Here's, yeah, yeah. Here's, yeah. yeah. It here's, helps. Here's my paperwork, and I'm going right. to play a few. So yeah, here, right. here's it, a CD. Yeah, it it it. Get, I I remember giving one to, Annie, to um, Annie Allman in her guitar shop, and just and next time I went in there, she's like, that's a that's a good, you know. Good, good collection of songs. Whatever. That's so generous that was of her in, to listen to it as well. Yeah, that was encouraging. So yeah. all that, there was a lot, I realized there was a lot of encouragement from maybe her and, and um, different people I met that uh, saw something that they, like, may, may, maybe this isn't just a, a drunken buffoon yeah, yeah. covering Tom Petty. Yeah, well, you packaged it better than sitting at the bar, you know. <laughs> Trying to get it together, yeah, yeah. yeah. So this ho- town's hard like that because I think a lot of people move here and you can drink everywhere on the street. So. It, it it's oh yeah it's it's kind of easy to get well i'm gonna busk for two hours yep you know get enough for a bottle or whatever and just yeah and exactly just kind of vanish and crash somewhere you know later people, i'll worry um, about that later tybee especially i've seen people come down here and they're like it's a party every day it's like yeah. it can be right but you yeah. got to find that balance mm-hmm. i've seen so many people like less than a year they're like they just yeah. can't find the balance right and that's just them coming down and partying if right. you're a musician and you right. come to Savannah, the most drinkingest town. Yeah. Every gig is like, all right, we'll give you a fifty. The first thing they tell you is what, how much of a bar tab they'll give you. Yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Like, you're, you're going to um, uh, uh, Creole Reds. Yeah. Remember Red? He would he would book stuff. I remember Dave's band Ho- Hobo Erotic was his band. I don't know if you ever saw them. <laughs> That's a good name. But, yeah, it's great. The best band name ever, really. But he had a song. He had a song called Mongoloid Sky. That I I, I don't know if Dave has masters of all that stuff, but um. Uh, Creole Red would he would say you know it's it's got to be a win win so yeah. basically he just gave you draft beer the band and that's it 
So you, you'd go in there low. But if you in. could get away with it, just give the and man it was just, beer. Yeah. If you, it's just a matter of how bad you wanted to play <laughs> and prove maybe if, if there's 200 people come in here and drink drink all night and he stay, might some, some dollars, maybe, maybe. everybody get 50 bucks, you know, but it was not, not likely because you, yeah. you go up the stairs into this room and have this conversation. And, and um, I remember that a few times opening for Dave's band and then sitting in with them uh, doing like all different. Well, that's stuff. a step up from opening for karaoke. Yes, not quite as yeah. The, the, soul crushing. Yeah, it's just anywhere that had a PA was what. I, and then I finally got a PA at Roadies. And oh, so then, you're you're going around. You're um, like, there's a prerequisite. You need a PA because you I don't had, have one. I had well, I had a rehearsal space in Denton. Okay, uh -huh. that that it was a forty two twenty by twenties, and you can open the window or the doorway between the two rehearsal spaces. Uh huh. And it was called Space Plus Storage in Denton, and it was out in the country, and you could drive out there, hit the gate code, and play drums at 5 in the morning if you wanted, 3, sure, what, yeah. any time. So I ended up getting – it was in my name, which was the stupidest thing I've ever done. <laughs> and ended up at, so it ended up having to afford, to afford it. Um, I had two other bands sharing it with us. And so, oh, so you are like, subletting it to other yeah, bands. so they had a key, the code and everything, and the lock, padlock. You throw the doors up. Oh, or but you'd it run was the all power in, down the road. It you know, was all but, in your name. And so man. my PA was in there, and this oh punk band uh, kicked out their singer, and um, he came in and knifed all the PA speakers, Shut the, the Marshall cabinet, stabbed them, and pissed on everything. So at that point, my PA was – was done then the, the head unit i still have the head unit it's it's an old pv like just quarter inch inputs did he piss on it too yeah i had to change the just fuse just dried it out yeah dried it out change the fuse <laughs> a little for, for breeze <laughs> aerosol in there but uh that good that, that was a concern is that okay i'm gonna save enough to get a pa with this, these yeah. different jobs and try to pay off what i had left owing in texas yeah and then get a PA and just go. So you yeah. left Savannah to go to Texas, back to Texas, you record Did, the record, and then yeah. what brought you back to Savannah? Well, my, my thing was I'm always going to record in Texas. That was my thing for a while that I you I, had this I'm real not recording in the state. I, yeah, I record in Texas. I only recorded. And that's yeah, it. that was it. So I went back to do that, and um, um, I made it back here. Yeah, but it was pretty foggy. Uh, time. I'm sure. Yeah, because um, like you were saying, uh, especially a musician in Savannah, everyone. You, yep. you get paid in alcohol a lot of time. Right. And right. they'd rather pay you in alcohol than cash because it's cheaper to pour you Bud Light drafts. Yeah. And, and as far as Dallas, I mean, just the gigs that I had, it, the, you, you might get one every other month on, on, on Greenville Avenue, Deep Ellum. Yeah. And they, did, they didn't pay what they were. It, it, it's, it was tough to yeah. – you had to really – they're like, oh, Build. you're playing for exposure. It's like, oh, yeah, I forgot, that kind of thing. I forgot I can next, I can cash an exposure check. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, get you, get you really far. Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, we're gonna uh, take a little coffee break, but uh, during the break, we're gonna play a. Um, so Sean McNally animated, yeah, this yeah. this video for you, and it's for the song yeah. Anada. Yep. Um, we're gonna play you a clip of that and grab some coffee. <laughs>
for the break, uh, we start. Uh, I was like, let's wait for the second half to get into our little tour stories. And uh, well, mm-hmm. well, let's th- let's go to a, a little bit to the genesis of the train wreck. So you're doing open mics, and you meet Marcus and Eric around the same time, or? Um, well, there was a band, Uncle Sam's Medicine Cabinet. Okay. USMK was uh, the band. It was Paul Paul Celentano on banjo, and trombone. Jason Sutton from Argyle on guitar and vocals. And then me, so I was playing the open mics and, and doing the Bernie thing. I met them. At the strip at, club? No. Oh. Well, well, that was that was pre, uh, well, that was after. Um, but we played around like Rotary Club in Bluffton. We, we did all kinds of three-piece gigs for a while. And then a few months, I went back solo. And then, then I met Eric at that point somewhere. Uh... Oh, at Island, uh, Islands, not Island Sports Bar, but the uh, uh, Island Decker guy, Rudy, Bridge? Rudy. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Not the so, lawnmower bar. Um, yeah, um, uh, Ray Lundy would host an open mic there. So oh, gotcha. a bunch of people would converge there, kind of play. And that's I think that's where I met Well, Eric. so I think the no. first time that I really met you formally was I was living in Athens with Eric Dunn. He and I had a house together. Yes, and I you play came DTs. up. You went and played DTs, mm. which is literally delirium tremens down there. <laughs> yeah, um, and that was you a get, fun gig. And you and you and Eric uh, rehearsed at the house for a little bit before y'all did that gig that night. Yes, we did. And we that had, was a that was a cool house. And I think we had a whatever. morphine cover all your way, a Ben Harper cover. If I, uh, How long was excuse your set, me, you Mister? Did was you have the, like an hour set, maybe or not even uh, forty five minutes? So yeah. so like the opener would go on. All the, the yeah. their frat would come in for, yeah. to see them play, and then it clears and out. Then it clears out there was you one start. girl there that <laughs> stayed from my my set. I think I broke two strings oh, Lord. that show. Yeah. And um, anyway, that's that was a well, that was a great night. The only time yeah. I, I went to I went to DTS twice. Yeah, and one time was for you guys, and one time was for someone else, and both times, right? No one was there. Yeah, not was, even people uh, with DTS. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was. I was like, because Athens is to to Georgia what Austin is kind of yeah so I thought if I can get get this steady thing going here little did you know I, though you had the worst basement gig that you, you could know, get in Athens yeah it was kind of real it was a basement scene, scene type yeah, of six, yeah, so, yeah. you know and then by but the time I don't I, even think they had people that went there normally very much just to drink yeah. I don't know if is it still there I have no idea yeah, 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 it was real, been, real underground like kind of Savannah Blues used to yeah, be yeah exactly it was, you it's going literally down the a stairs, basement yeah, downstairs, you go downstairs, downstairs there's a bar yeah. and then a like old yeah. old stone walls you know kind of but yeah that was fun um I do remember that, yeah. Yeah. Barely. So, barely. Um, <laughs> well, so uh, I, later on, I joined the train wrecks, but one of the first things you told me about was when you were doing your audition circuit. Uh, so, there's a little strip club called the King's Inn on Victory. Yes, yes. And uh, were, were you taking your resume there as well? <laughs> <laughs> well, I came back from um, Texas with, with the CD. Well, the CD shipped to me. So, I got the CDs, um, and I remember looking in the paper and it said king's Inn. it just said king's Inn. So looking for local talent to play for exposure is what it said <laughs> exactly and it had a phone Classic. number i call lady says bring in a bring in a record whatever i bring in a record had a beer and while i'm sitting there i, I look at the stage and i, I hadn't looked at it I, I looked at it and i said oh there's a pole oh, <laughs> is that like something they have it's like old strip club no then this 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 lady walks out puts her money in the jukebox she puts her own money in the jukebox you shook me all night long comes on seriously and, sh- if and there's she's, a classic stripper this song is exactly what happened yeah yeah this quintessential greatest strip song ever and uh so so she starts dancing and the lady uh gave me maybe gave me another beer and i finished that very quickly <laughs> she's like, so do you want it? So she's here's the deal. You, you'll you'll play for exposure. I'm not paying, but you'll play for exposure between five and seven, or maybe maybe it was four and six, like right at half so the it hour. So it wasn't necessarily a lunchtime gig, but it might as well have been it, lunchtime. Yeah. At the it wasn't a brunch up. show. Yeah, <laughs> it was, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, I I immediately I, I think I, I finished that second beer very quickly. And I think I told her I, I'll be I'll be in touch because I just. I, I, so you I, never I, picked up the guitar that day? I never did because I could not morally, yeah. spiritually, musically <laughs> yeah. ever yeah. open for strippers. I just yeah. thought, like, that's just not going to happen. But it did later. But that, that's, 
I mean, you know, you got to make a living, man. That's I mean, what I'm you got to earn some money. And we yeah. were, we were before the show, uh, Kelly and I were talking about like uh, bad opening acts or whatever. Yeah. Uh, a buddy of mine, his girlfriend used to bartend at a strip club over across from South Carolina. Yeah. Or across in South Carolina. Right, right. And we took her to work one day. And because I've never been like a strip club guy, like I right. just, I mean, right. I can see titties anytime. You know right. what I mean? Like right. I just don't, uh, I'm not a strip club guy and I don't have any money. So yeah. that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. Well, anyway, so I'm like 21, 22, something like that. And uh, we go drop her off at work and we just hang around and start drinking for a little bit. All of a sudden at like six, a butt rock band starts. Now, if you don't know what a butt rock band is, it's like 98.7, nothing but rock. Okay. So, yeah. drop you know, me, just butt don't rock, don't whatever's on the radio, nothing okay. but rock. Okay. You know, so this yeah. is early 2000s. Okay. So it's about 637 at the strip club, and yeah. there's this band playing. Yeah. Like butt rock band. Okay. There's eight people there and a girl dancing. Three of them were to the, the bartenders. Band. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Wow. So I was like, oh, wow. They, who are they opening for? Right? right. Right. So they play like an hour, hour and a half set. I was like, this is soul crushing for me, and I'm not it's, even yeah. really in a band this, yet. The bass player has <laughs> tears in his eyes. <laughs> the sweat, I swear. Yeah. His booty sweat. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And so then they go, and up next we got Handsome Dan, and he's like the, cl- he's like the house DJ. Yeah. At this fucking strip club. Right. So yeah. a, a five piece band who has hauled in their Marshall amps and their drum kit mm. out walks this greasy guy that looks like he just got out, just got out of the terminal. And he's like, handsome Dan. And now we got ISIS coming up to the stage. <laughs> right. This is pre 2001, I guess. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it was a popular name in the clubs. It was. Yeah. I thought about changing my name to that. Yeah. Jason ISIS. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so then years down the road, uh, so the, actually the first time I played with the train wrecks was at the lawnmower bar because Marcus couldn't make a gig. Yep. So you guys, and which I put is on a, reopened. They've re- somebody yeah, yeah, bought that, it and yeah. cleaned it up and it's, uh, yeah, yeah. I, still not, I, still that was a, I remember that night. Yeah. That was fun. That was I put on a, a white V-neck t-shirt because that's what Marcus always wore it was a white <laughs> V-neck t-shirt. So yeah. I put it on, I was like, I can adapt. The only yeah. thing was I had a mullet. Yeah. I, you know, yeah. I wasn't an yeah. exact, uh, facsimile of yeah. it. But uh, I remember having a good time. So then we, we, we joined the band, and then we go on the road. Yeah. And going on the road, it was the first time that I'd ever spent any real, like, actual time on the road. But then I started to realize, I was like, the road is fun, yeah. but it ain't all it's cracked up to be. Right. And when we were traveling, it was in a very small truck. We put little Eric Dunn in the back in the jumper seat, which was about the size of an 8-year-old child's seat. Extra cab. He'd lay down. Put a pillow it had back. the yeah. literal jump seat. It was like a futon that came yeah. off of the, the yeah. side of the log. He would sit very back comfortable. There. Very comfortable. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're in the front and we're listening to the new Jack White album the whole way there, the whole way back. Oh yeah, and Blunder every Bus. every yeah, place. Good record. Yeah, and you're not drinking at this point. No. And every no. place we go, Jack was six months old. I think that first time wow, we yeah. went out. I think yeah. So we're on our way back <laughs> the first time, and we've had a rough go. You know, we're right. well, at least Eric and I. We're drinking heavily everywhere. And Gentry, your wife, she goes, hey, boys, I just want to congratulate you guys on a good tour. It's the last stop on your way back. Let me get you a nice hotel room. The only thing was, she she was like, here's the money for a nice hotel yeah. room. She didn't yeah. book it because if she would have booked it, she would have gotten us, I don't know, a nice hotel room. But right. instead, the right. three of us put our drunk noggins together. And we were like, Rock Mount, North Carolina, Hojo. Yeah. This sounds nice. Yeah. We walk into the room. And oh boy, you want to talk about like, uh, I don't know. Uh, it look, all right, so first of all, <laughs> they hadn't washed the pillowcases and it looked like a stripper with with greasy weave had laid on that pillow or a raccoon had given birth on it. <laughs> Whichever one. Probably both. It's probably both. Yeah. We both. opened the drawer where the Bible should be <laughs> and there's a mm. half-eaten muffin mm. with a cigarette butt Cheerios. put out fruit in loops. it, and there was yeah. Fruit Loops next mm. to it. Yeah. No Bible anywhere. I think they ripped all the pages out to smoke fentanyl or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember looking at the comforter after I, I, I remember just went in there and laid down. I was like, we were so, so tired. I was like, I just want to lay down. And I laid down. I was like, what, what is that? And then um, I got so mad. I'd never destroyed a hotel room, never been disrespectful in that in my entire life. I took the comforter and was like, oh, just like incredible hulked it off the balcony into the pool, you know, and I never, I know I felt bad for doing that. I was like, I just, just, you know, but the comforter was, it it was, it was yellow. It wasn't even, it wasn't even, it hadn't been washed in years. So I I think in that fit of, of anger, um, you bumped the, uh, the armoire, I guess we'll call it the TV was in and it moved an inch, right? 
the color difference between underneath where this armoire was and the color of the carpet <laughs> that was visible. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it, was, it was 16 <laughs> gradients different. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> yeah. I don't think, I, I, it's amazing we didn't get, I mean, uh, some kind of terminal uh, <laughs> yeah. toxin. That was that where room. Omicron was born. It in was. that hotel it was. room All right there. Was born in, that, Rock, that. in Rock Mountain, North Carolina. Yeah. But we also had one of my most transformative experiences. So we're in, um, uh, what was the... Uh, it was in Virginia. It was in Norfolk. No, uh, it was the little Hampton, the sleepy little town outside of Hampton. <laughs> um, uh, Cape Charles. Cape Charles. Yeah. So we get to Cape Charles, and uh, it's it's a it's on a bay. It's like a sailing community, and they have we played Kelly's or something like that. It's like an Irish pub, something like that, whatever. Okay. Well, anyway, so we play the gig, and some guy's there, and he's like, "Hey, I have I own a hotel in the town. Yeah. If you guys want to stay at it." Oh, so he right. shows it to us, and it's this boutique, super yeah. nice hotel. Yeah. I was like, this is, and that was yeah. literally like three nights before we stayed at the Rock Rock Mountain Hotel, right. whatever. Yeah. So we show up. We play the, the gig the night before. It turns out this everyone in this town, it's kind of eerie because they were all really super nice. Yeah. So I thought they had like the secret that they had this sheep that they kept in the back that they all fucked or something. Right. Like I thought there was some kind of. everyone was so, it was eerie. It yeah. was Stephen King. It was Little. a vortex there, I think. It was some kind of, like, similar in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Uh-huh. It's a known thing with that town. It's It was similar feel. Yeah, the, it just had the that. Cool there was town. a lot of, it was really cool town. Not, an underlying thing that everybody knew. Knew, but it was, it was a secret that the out-of-towners didn't know, but yeah. it was what kept everyone there Remember happy. Remember Cheech? Yeah, uh, yeah, Cheech. Yeah, yeah, God bless his soul. God I don't know if he's Cheech. still around, but... uh um, he had that farmhouse too. Yeah, I think we went. We out stayed there. there on one of the last nights. Yeah, they gave us the hotel and for that the one night. Old. That had its own mojo too. So this town, it wasn't wow. derelict in any ways, but it was sort of a ghost town, and it was losing its luster. Well, they had yeah. a beautiful theater there. Oh yeah, remember? Yeah. So we yeah. played the gig the night before, and the people who own the theater, they're like, "Hey, we um, we we're trying to keep the lights on at this theater, and yeah. we, would you guys be willing to play it tomorrow?" For free and we were like and that was on a sunday we were like yeah for sure we're not yeah. doing anything else yeah. so we show up to this theater we go into the back we go out onto the stage we get all sound checked everything you know the, the lady running sound for us was about to go on tour with i don't know fucking rush or someone like that she was oh, their sound right. person you remember that yeah and then yeah. her husband that's right filmed for national geographic and he filmed the show which we've never seen still but oh yeah so we play the show. So we probably the, deleted it. Yeah, right, yeah. He's like, yeah, <laughs> these guys are terrible. <laughs> so we play the first song and the house lights are down and it's dark. Yeah. We're done with the first song and the house lights come up. The entire town yeah. showed up. Yeah. I mean, they, it was a packed theater yeah. because they and they all paid, you know, 10 bucks to right. uh, keep the, you know, so right. I, I, in some way we kept the lights on yeah. for like another few months of that place. Yeah. But I just remember leaving there, like, not as, like, heroes, but I remember it, it was fulfilling in a way, like, oh, th that was super fun that they asked us to do it and that yeah. we did it. But then at the same time, I was like, what is these people's secret? Well, something is weird about this. I place. remember that they, uh, they um, I don't know the history of that theater or what it was called even, yeah. but uh, I remember it, stuff like that, ha when stuff like that happens, that, that just is, you know, um, can you play this this farmhouse or whatever? Um, that's always encouraging because yeah. it wasn't on the calendar, it wasn't on yeah. the books, and, and we had a free happened. day on Sunday anyway. Yeah, and, it, and um, I think that was our last, like our second was, to last stop or something like that. That was, too. yeah, that was. Uh, what was it the Cape Charles? I can't remember the name of the yeah. theater. And, uh, uh, I, I, uh, I, I, yeah, I haven't I been back since then, but hopefully, like. I mean, yeah. it was a cool Remember guy. Pete's Tap House? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was in that, Hampton, right? I hope that's still open, man. Yeah, that, that guy dude was, was that, cool. Yeah. Also, there was a, he, he had two um, two locations, and we played both of them. Yeah. And one time, yeah, the second one was, we couldn't yeah, play for some reason, but he let us stay in the. So he had a guest room above the bar. Yeah. And we went up there after the first show, and he was right. like, "You want me to invite some waitresses up to hang out with you?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah let's do it." Yeah, you know, yeah, so we we're just yeah. up there drinking, partying, whatever. Yeah. We couldn't play at his other place for some reason, and right. he goes, "Hey, come downstairs. We sit at the bar. He gives us a couple of drinks. He goes." Here, man, I'm gonna peel you guys off like a hundred bucks for gas. Yeah, right. He was such a cool dude, yeah, so accommodating. Yeah. He was a musician too, and so he, he was an ex musician. He, he, he sat up there and played with us. He he was he was Tom oh, Waits. Oh yeah, I remember him singing, man. Yeah. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. He was awesome, man. So on that really same good, trip, man. um, so uh, we we have a little song we sort of wrote together in the truck. It's called oh, yeah. Foot Pussy. 
Yes, it's it's a hit in Sweden. It is. They a, it, love it's it. huge in Belgium as well. I, uh, you the know, Belgian breakfast is our next. <laughs> our next. Uh, we need to get <laughs> breakfast at Belgian Tiffany's. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's they love it. They play it every Sunday. So brunch. the story yeah. goes, we had a buddy, and the because everyone's like foot pussy. Really? What are you? So we we recorded it on your iPhone with GarageBand. Yes. Singing harmonies together. Straight into cassette Straight adapter. Straight into the into cassette the truck. adapter. Yeah. Yeah. Into the truck. Analog. Get so we cut that. a whole song yeah. on this ride. Yeah. And it's about, you know, a foot Did pussy. Did you cue that up for the... <laughs> I, you, I will. I'm going to cue it up. What was the one verse? Uh, uh, the toenails. <laughs> uh, uh, don't clip the toenails. I like, I like the length. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> so uh, It's okay if you... Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I, well, I, I, can, I, can, I can fuck you while you clip them in the sink. That's what <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there were like 19 verses. We yeah, just kept, there, there, we yeah, kept we, writing verses. We had plenty of verses. Yeah, it was because we had a buddy of ours. Um, he was uh, he was in college, and it was two guys moving in, but they were moving into a three bedroom house. So and this is back in like the early 90s. That's right. So he put it on Craigslist that they needed a third roommate. <clears throat> so they get this guy who's the third roommate and goes, um, "Hey, you know, I'm going to the same college." So they're like, "All right, move in." Yeah. So they start waking up. With this guy standing at the foot of their bed, and but they haven't caught him yet, and they wake up. They're like, oh, Dave, what are you doing here? He's like, Oh, nothing. I'm just drunk, man. Sorry, wandered into the wrong room. Finally, one of the gentlemen wakes up, and he finds out what has been happening. The third mm-hmm. roommate is coming in and rubbing his member on the feet of yes. his roommates. Yes. And I was like, What does he think? It's a foot pussy. So then I look, and if you put two feet together, <laughs> there's arches. <laughs> <It's really> arches. <laughs> So yeah. whenever we comment on arches, anytime you see Jason <laughs> or, yep. or I out, yep. out there in the streets, <laughs> then you'll know exactly what we're talking about. So, and it's actually a thing. People order the prosthetic feet. You remember you sent that link? Oh, I sent you the link. Link. You can order a foot. It's more of like an ankle hole. And then there's another one that you sent a couple links to me. I was like, this is actually a thing. So. That's why the song's so big in, in parts of the world. Yeah, yeah, people so, yeah. Are really like Belgians feet. Belgians love feet. And they love feet, and so the Swedes too. You know what I mean? They do, and I, don't, I I get it. Hey, man, you know, do whatever you know, in the privacy of your own home. That's, different that's Luft fun. waffles for different folks. You know? Yeah. Um, so we uh, we, ne- we never brought that to the stage. We never brought cool. to the stage. You know, it's, a, it's a cult thing. You know, we don't. Yeah. The U.S. just don't get it yet. Yeah. The <laughs> U.S. isn't ready for that. F U T P U Z Y. So uh, we're, we're in the train wrecks together, and we go out to Ardmore Farms in Effingham, which was, I mean, it's a functioning farm. They share crop, uh, yeah. like corn and stuff out there, but they have this really giant, beautiful room where we cut a record. Oh, are, oh you're talking about the, oh, yeah, okay. Uh, out there in Effingham, yeah. Okay, that's right. And that's we right. had our assistant, Doug, there, and mm-hmm. so it's a, it's a huge, like, uh, you know, it's just one big, giant room. Cabin. That, yeah, a, modular a cabin, cabin, yeah. Or, yeah. So we had our assistant Doug out there putting mics in the ceiling, yeah. in the next room. We had yeah. amps in the closet, and so that was also a super fun. Yeah, Nate, uh, Nate let's borrow all the gear. Yeah, we, we, we brought, the gear. took the Pro Tools mobile rig yeah. out that there. That drive is sitting on my desk, and yeah. I just don't have a cable now to get from the drive to the computer. Oh, no. Because the, I need, you know, I need to order one, but if I can get that cable, I can fly all that stuff around and yeah. figure, so I want to I at some least up, pick, because yeah. I remember the, the Long Blade Dragon version we yep. did. Was, was we had like eight people there stomping on the ground at the same time. Right. Remember, yeah, right. yeah. So for the for the to finish out the trio or the the trilogy, uh, you were you were saying uh, you want to, you know, c- sort of like do it live in terms of the songs are written, you yep. learn the songs, right, right. At least play a few of the. You, obviously, you're never going to not have to do overdubs in some sort of way, yeah. Especially not um, attempt to not do. That's the goal is to attempt. Not to tinker forever, basically. It's just to attempt to get the foundations laid, bass, drums, rhythm, guitar, yeah. vocal. Attempt attempt that this yeah. time because that, um, that's just more fun, man, just to get the kinetic energy, get everybody's yeah. telepathy going and, and everybody cued in for just, you know, if we can get one song done in a day or four, I mean, yeah. or five, whatever, just, just have and a And your studio's already set. Everything's, you know, ready to yeah, go in some sort it's, of uh, way. Set it, set it, and just leave it. And so it, it works really well for that. It's loud, but when you play play it back, you we get everything we need to mix, you know. So are you at the um, <clears throat> the chapters phase of the third project? A couple, a couple maybe two or three in. 
Yeah. Dave sent a couple paragraphs, and so he's working so on So he's that. still in the works. Of, he's got two boys, so he's he's yeah. trying to navigate the, the job and, and all that. Well, he came down for the uh, the premiere of the Tybee Post. Yeah. And yeah. Jeremy Riddle yep. uh, read the, the chapter, or part, you know, yeah. excerpts from yeah. the chapters before we were playing. Right. And uh, that and that was a super fun gig, too. It was also filmed, and I had gotten a viral infection like three days before oh, that's that. that's right. Roids. And I was they they shot yeah. me up with some. Roids, I remember buddy. that last night I was watching the Anata video to send to you. Yeah, and I and I, I watched it, and got through the book reading, and then and by the end of that ten minute version of that song, yeah, I mean, and I, I was like, man, he is really hitting it back there. And I, I was like, oh, you had that thing, you had something. It was I, it was I like, had a rash up both of my sides, and I okay. was rubbing like cream on it for two weeks, and nothing was happening. I had to go to immediate med, and right. they were like, this is some weird viral infection. So the, he, he sh- the, the girl shot me in the ass that with day. steroids yeah. that day. <laughs> and it started to clear up almost immediately. Yeah, they work. But I got there. I was like, boys, I know you might think I might be doing something different, but it's not. This is just roids. And yeah. I, I kind of drank a little bit to try and, like, yeah, calm it yeah, down. Yeah. But all that alcohol meant nothing <laughs> as on that last song. I remember when we did the ring, you said, make sure you start it slow. Because <laughs> so in I, rehearsal, I started a little fast, and it yeah. was like, Cause yeah, it's like, <laughs> but I mean that was fun because we rehearsed everything that mo- the Monday before. Yeah, yeah. With a one off, and it, I was nervous going into that, but I knew for so, I, I think leaving when you're playing music, leaving a lot of things up to the moment. Yes. When the song kicks in, and everybody maybe n- doesn't know what's going to happen, and as long as you surrender, kind of. Well, the record does this. As long as you leave it open, if you're open to doing that, yep. then I th- that some magic happened. But that I night think even during songs. our rehearsals, you were like, I mean, I think we had all kind of agreed, like we're, you know, the record is our baseline. Right. Right. But we're not so going to be so beholden to because if because Kyle, Kyle does some killer shit on there. Yeah. And playing live, he also because we did right. uh, during sound check for that. Right. Kyle was doing a couple things yeah. like on elite, on you know, on the lead stuff. Yeah. He and was recalling that I think on the fly because we had done it was yeah. been a year since the recording yeah. so I think he he uh, we pulled it off I, I, you know See, I mean and that's and I'm always know. nervous until the first note right and then right. the fir- and then I was like oh we you know and yeah. I could I could feel your nerves a little bit but I was like hey look man I got your tempo back here you know right. stand right. on me I got right. you because all the, my only the only th- as a drummer it's so much easier for me than say a guitar player or a bass player or a string instrument or a piano player or whatever. All I need is rhythm. Right. So I can learn songs. Right. And be the compass where it's like, hey, don't worry about it, man. You get to the chorus when you get to the chorus, buddy. Right. You right. know what I mean? And that, that's the way with songs um, allowing for that movement to happen where, the, 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 yeah, the, the, the record does this one thing. As long as that temp, the, the tempo yeah, and yeah. the lyrics can be delivered on, yeah. the, on that tempo. Um, Do you write in space for... Like so, you know, at, at, you, you're making the song, you're writing the song. You're like, yeah. Okay, if I do play this live and someone wants to hop in and do something, you yeah. know, some sort of lead. Yeah. Do you kind of write in a space for that? Um, that night was just kind of a nod. Yeah. The couple of the songs had specific leads, but. Because you don't want to stop lot. a guy if when Kyle was on, yeah, on he, fire, you're right. not going to cut him. Yeah. It's just kind of nod or hope that they. I mean. Yeah. Um, or just call something like you yeah. know, point at Jesse. Jesse did a great job on the keys. Nate Je- did a great yeah. job. Yeah, everyone on the- was great. It was super. It was a very pro thing because none of us, I, in my opinion, had any fear of the other. Yeah. Because a yeah. lot of times when you play with people that you're not, and I'm not super familiar with playing playing with. I know Kyle's music and right. Kyle himself. Right. I know Nate. Yeah. But that was the first time I'd ever played a gig with them. Yeah. But knowing how good they were. Yeah. It's easy yeah. to trust in them because sometimes you play right. gigs with people that you don't know. Right. And if you, the crowd can tell if you don't trust them right. in terms of like, oh, look, they're afraid to commit to a thing. Right. But, and, but especially the, the thing that made Anata good for me in terms of learning the songs was there was a feel that permeated the entire thing. Right. So it wasn't like, oh, song three is a reggae tune and song four yeah. Yeah, is you know th- yeah. there w- there was kind of a through line, but it wasn't train wrecky either. It wasn't yeah. there's it wasn't I the shuffle one, the whole time. There's break, one or two of those. One, yeah. I I I think the third one, going into that, starting that, getting that ready for the fall, um, 
I want to make sure that it's very simple. A lot of stuff I've been writing is real simple, chord, chord yeah. wise. There might be some other layers, but the base of it's going to be real. I want it to be exuberant and and, and high, performative Ex instead of ex exuberant, real high energy yeah. music with these to juxtapose the the sadness and the suffering yeah. of some of those lyrics because I haven't written a song for the new one yet. Oh yeah, the, the title track's written, and it's like uh, if. I don't know if uh, maybe um, uh, Pearl Jam and uh, uh, Lucero wrote something. Gotcha. It's real exuberant. It's so. Are you waiting for the book to get fleshed out to sort of take your I writing prompt for a minute? I stopped at the title track, which we have lyrics for, and uh, and the music. And um, it was one of those things where it's just you know you know it's in the key of A. You know what the verse is. So when the chorus. It was one of those things where the music was written, like just kind of, it'll do F sharp minor, yeah, D, yeah. B minor, A, D, E, back to the verse. Well, because and, I'm and sure there's there's certain it, um, modes or keys even, like uh, right. F sharp, uh, like minor, right. it feels a certain way. Right. right. So if you're, uh, you know, e even though you're going to juxtapose the power poppy thing, you know, right. it's still not going to be in A major all the time. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But still, right. you can make a pop a pop sounding song out of an F sharp minor. Yeah, yeah. Well, the the, the both of these start in the key of G, with the people's key, uh, and I. Oh, the, I, the, oh. The, this one I'm going to move it up a, a whole step to A. Okay, I got you. Start a. for oh, okay. It'll be pedal steel again. See, that, that's, steel. that's the thing I'm interested in, like because I mean you can write a song every day, you know, if you're inspired to. Right. But then what happens when you're not inspired? You're like, oh well, I haven't written a song in B major. You know what I found is that the last time it it really hit me to get in the room and, and I, I think I got four kind of blueprint things done, got to the scratch vocal, saved them. And I walked outside and the moon was just glowing full. And I, I said, I said, the lyrics were just happening, you know? And I said to myself, no wonder. Um, and, I, and then somebody else told me that certain people when they're recording, they look at the lunar cycle and they know probably not best to book on these these times because you're going to be kind of I never thought of flat that. and it might not be the energy but there's the, there's an energy in that i think with um being close to the water out here sure and so you um, walk outside and you're like man i'm having i'm gushing I didn't know today was, i didn't know it was a full moon yeah, I was like, why did like, oh. four songs just happen yeah um and so, so how, how 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 similar is it to so i don't know in my own experience sometimes a song is written in five minutes not right. even I'm not talking about recording. I'm just talking about just, yeah. verses and, and chord, guitar right. chords. Right. And then sometimes they take, you know, my favorite things that I've ever probably heard or done are the five minute ones. But then there are also right. things that like you have a vision for and you spend 50 hours on it. Right. Writing it just to make it. Right. Absolutely perfect. And, you know, a lot of times, I don't know, do those turn out as well for you as the ones that happen faster? Um, these days, things are happening pretty fast with the the process of, of maybe getting a, a click tempo cutting the acoustic guitar trying the drum seeing what the drums would do just playing drums and then then bass and then scratch vocal and then seasoning stuff so i've got i've been practicing while i'm waiting to get the everything formulated for the next chapters and everything else i've been kind of pretty I, i've got a file that just says demos 2022 yeah and since january 1st it's probably 30 in there really that, that yeah. I can. So when, when we get ready to do the third one, I can pull and go you have a little well this, to pull. From, this yeah. one is, is one I want to work off of. Yeah. Maybe not exactly what I'm going to use, but, but it's a start. It's point. got a scratch vocal. I need to redo drums or redo bass. Um, so you're embracing the more, uh, lightning in a bottle thing instead Absolutely. of like, I'm going to craft this forever. Absolutely. I, I don't, let's just bang something out, the, but not, the, you know, not take anything away from it, but like, right. Well, sometimes quick ideas are good. Well, yeah. I mean, um, there was a song when, when all this stuff was happening in the last few months i i was um looking looking for a chorus that meant could, could a universal like a blowing in the wind type of chorus like a healing type of chorus oh, and so wow. yeah. i got the baritone acoustic and just it's in b so it's um real low and i sat down plugged it in and got a click track to it and the vocal and the chorus came out to be um i do believe it's time for love to take over and that's it. It's real kind of uh, monotone, Cobain in that kind of, I yeah. believe it's time. So, S sort and of it, chanty. And I, I cut the whole thing, and it just does the, 
the, you know, the E, A, and it goes to B to A, B to A, and then back to the, so I cut the drums and then the bass and pedal steel and listened to it the next day. It's like nothing really is wrong with, and the, the ride's going in the verse. So I'm trying to, for the third one, think of ways I can not repeat myself. Oh, I don't right, repeat. yeah. And it's, it, it, it's I'm, I told Dave, I was like, I've sent it to him. I said, we need to write this into the book. So we're doing that a little bit. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, so like now it's coming if, from the opposite if, side a little if bit. If there's a working demo, it's be like, well, look, chapter eight sounds like this. It sure, sounds yeah. like we need this. If the this. puzzle piece, if you know, if it fits, yeah, then do yeah. it. And so we have that to work from and then whatever is new. And yeah. um, hopefully it's a lot of it's new. But um, well, so many it's people good. Get, to, it's so many people get caught up in like, oh, uh, I wrote a simple song, A, G, and B, whatever. Right. <clears throat> and they're like, it must not have value because it's so simple. It's like you right. got to. Yeah. If, well, later you, you can cut the drums and just have the guitar after the second chorus. Yeah. And then put some delay on some lead guitars and then build it. You can do so much in post yeah. to give it breath and break sure, yeah. and air and, and space. But you got to capture so, that, that thing. It, and, and, and you don't, so most of the time you don't mean, you never, I didn't go down to the studio and set out like, I'm, go, I'm just going to, I had this chorus stuck in my head. I'm just going to sing that and whatever happens on the verse lyrics, I'll deal with it later. But it's almost like the microphone becomes a therapist. Uh -huh. And you're just trying to make sense of the world through that. In real singing time. And fi make yourself feel better singing. Yeah, yeah. And then y y every now and then y y you get in the headspace where three or four of those might happen in a night. And, but one of them yeah. is one that you go, that's one I'm going to develop. You overdub some stuff on it. And you end up with a lot of unorganized templates and files sure. with way too much shit in it. But... Um, How much has the satisfaction of all that changed over the course of your time being a musician? So say early on, you might write something that you're proud of and that you appreciate and it makes right. you feel one way. Right. Does it make you feel a little different now because it's, uh, it's a little more tangible to you? You're like, oh, I realize that this is some sort of self-care for me. Right. You know, I didn't know that this. until. I, I, that's why I was asking. It probably took a long time to realize yeah. the function of what you were doing. Yeah, like, I'm writing these songs because yeah. I feel it. Yeah. Now you understand that it's sort of like self-care, therapeutic. It is, and, it, and that's that's as important as anything monetary or anything uh, glorious. Well, and it comes glorious across because people know when you're bullshitting or when you're not. Yeah, and it's uh, it's authentic. I yeah, think you can people write a really love song, really want that yeah. right now. I mean, because you can sing all you know stri strip club songs or whatever. But <laughs> you can open for magi magicians and karaoke all yeah, day. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but with the, with the songwriting, I do understand that a little more now. Um, that sometimes when you don't if you go into the studio with the mindset of i'm going to create a masterpiece you put a lot of pressure on yourself to yep. force force and you have to i go in there to work so it's not a it's not a late it's a labor of love of course but at the same time I, I usually don't chart anything out i usually just leave it to i better get back there into the drums to get to the bass so i can remember yeah. I went to and, and I can, I if can, you're not you know. doing something you gotta have to you're like even if you're not necessarily recording stuff that you're gonna keep if you don't keep your recording chops up in terms of playing the guitar plugging in the equipment right right getting your tones together if right. you're not doing that constantly yeah if you don't use it you lose it and it's yeah. a real thing even yeah. if you're not necessarily writing masterpieces yeah getting, uh, so i do understand the, the concept the, the, of getting the, the in the and doing flow, work the workflow and, work. and, and that's what i've been working on since the new year is that going into this third third record i want to make sure that when that inspiration hits and it's time that it's just a matter of plug, go back to the drums, headphones are backed by the drums, the levels are set, and ca the capture is what we're all looking at, that lightning in a bottle you mentioned yep. earlier. You don't want to, you can't mess that up. If you do, and the preamp wasn't on, I've done, I've sat down oh, with, a, with a one condenser, say here, and, and just started playing, and then, I'll, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab this, and then the whole song happens, and I go back to listen to it, and it was the wrong channel. I, oh. I had armed the wrong channel, and I'm going. And then I try to, I try to grab that again. Doesn't that, happen. That, I don't remember what I was saying in the verses, and it might be a developed ten verse story yeah. about some grandpa on the Poop. oil fields or something, and, and it's Poop. gone. Poop. But there's a, there's a freedom to that too, where it was created. Sometimes you just let the universe have and it. It wasn't meant to be. It was too guess, personal. Yeah. It wasn't, wasn't meant wow. to be yeah. heard. And I mean, maybe my grandfather might have been in there. It, right. it might have been something. Where you, I don't know, man, with, with songwriting, there, there are people that, that work in Nashville and they get five people in a room yeah. and they're writing a song for Luke Bryan. Yeah, and exactly. that's their job for the day. Yeah. I respect that. That's great. That's yeah, a different whatever, type of craft. But when you're trying to make, the, the whole goal with Dave and when we talked about the trilogy and stuff was that 
to make we don't care about how commercial it is at all it's just a matter of making making the art making that, a representative art of what art, you're yeah that we, that we like and if we like it then uh maybe people will catch on to it when i'm 70 or 80 I, but that's not but the concern it, of, of why you're doing it because it's today. not very popular to do let's do a record about opioid addiction and opioid crisis yeah. stuff it, it wasn't a popular pop idea but and it's not overtly it's, thematic that in that way because I mean you're not going to look at you know the yeah. the cover or the, maybe yeah. even the song titles yeah you got to really dig into the lyrics yeah but and the opening tune that we played on here you know yeah. uh, well, uh, everything uh, can change with this one little pill like that could be yeah I mean I, I get it so. yeah that would uh, uh, Brody Perkins has done the art for both of those in Hawaii he's he's Dave's old buddy from South Carolina and he does uh, the animated characters for all kinds of stuff oh, cool, he's, yeah. he's he's he he's done real well for himself and he'd sent that art back and because of that tv and the things you remember video yeah he put the old tv and if you look at the photo of that inside the tv uh-huh it's actually a lady I believe oh, she looks like she's playing an upright a shotgun in one hand oh that's a shotgun that's it's not a shotgun. upright <laughs> i didn't i didn't know that for months and I, i'm and then the the kid kind of you know there's the mirror behind his head and yeah it's kind of symbolic of of some distance that's grown with say it's a like family the nouveau american family down there, like say the family eating the at a dinner table nowadays yeah it's hard that to do doesn't happen. once a week yeah it's it's turn everything off leave phones in the other room we're going to sit down and have it it's so it's many people something, come people come into the restaurant and they immediately hand their kids their ipad they're like stay the fuck out of my know, face watch your little shit it's weird we it's li- you know yeah we're uh we're in a place where and, and you, you play a gig say like saturday i was at basil's and I'm inside and there's a TV over here and I see people, you know, family sitting at tables and they're just scrolling back, back growing up. It's the, that's when you, that's yeah. when you talked about the week, you processed, yeah. you know, the aunt being sick or the, and it wasn't every you know, single night necessarily because some people get off work late. But yeah. I just remember you had to sit down yeah, and come together and kind of, you kind of connect. Yeah. Um, Even and, if and you're like, Oh, shut up mom. Mm, oh no, right. I don't like this girl or whatever. Right. right. Still, Right. It was a thing that's that's sort of missing, and that's why I, I think it's sort of hard for kids to, like, forge friendships with actual other humans that aren't between right. a screen. Right. And then as musicians come up, so yeah. when, when you're a kid, playing sports and playing yeah. in bands are what teach you your social cues and your social constructs and right. your ability yeah. to navigate personalities and expectations from people. Absolutely. So now kids coming up, Number one, they're separated by their their devices. Number two, pandemic and all that. Everyone's afraid for anyone to be around each other, anyways. Yeah. So that's a secondary it's, loss of human interaction. Right. So I think music is going to suffer in terms of people just sitting in a fucking garage together. Yeah. Well, when things reopen, and I remember being at Jazzed, and that room was a listening room. Yeah. People hadn't heard music live for a while, and when I sat down, I could I did a couple songs. It's like, I'm not hearing anybody talking at all. And I looked around and I was like, wow, I need to dig deep and really deliver what's happening now because I realized how people needed music. They were, they were getting ther- the therapy. They were and it wasn't the just a background thing for them. It wasn't. Know, and now it is. It's back, yeah. to, of course. It's back to background, background now, and, yeah. And, and people clanging. Because we used to do, you know, man, that, that fucking rooftop where we had to <laughs> put our, sh- we had to put our shit in an elevator. That came up last week with somebody. Uh, of yeah, the load and in, the floor the, would clear while we're playing. Then all of a sudden, their house music, their booty music, was yeah. five times louder yeah. than us. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, we'd be done with our set. Here come the here come the dancers. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. That's another soul crushing gig. Yeah. It was like opening for strippers. Well, that's the thing with like playing music live and then and then playing music in the studio or creating it to play live. Uh, I the older I'm, I'll be 45 on the 22nd of this month and. The next five years, I kind of block things, block things in five years. I, I want to turn the creative do- knob to like 11, if you yeah. will. And to, you're already to where per- when this third book is you're done. You're already pretty high on the creative knob when it well, comes to writing. I'm trying because the, free, the, the, the third record, the third book will be heavy, but I want it to be dressed in a power pop thing where yeah, it's not where it's, it's like something you'd listen heavy to. Heavy you know. themes, but happy right, tunes. Right. And I the, like that idea. So yeah. it's not where. And then after that, see that w- once I can get the third one done, I was going to say, so now you've wrapped, completed something. And so then, now, now then what? all these demos and all these st- outtakes that you have stacked up, and all, that you I'll have enough used. stacked from these two records and the third one, and that farmhouse stuff, like I, all that stuff, I want to figure out a way outside of iTunes and Spotify, yeah, to 
give that to people, whether it's like putting all the train wreck stuff, all the outtakes, the farm Maybe records, just on a all the solo card on, a, on a little uh, flash drive, a little flash drive, and order f- 500 flash drives and have those because p- people I've had people be, you have CDs, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Right, yeah. I mean, it's like we're at that point. Yeah, you know, yeah. I, the CD's been the gold standard for for yeah. Um, now you just need and a, now it's vinyl, now which you need moves a QR slow. Code. Yeah, see. So yeah, pretty soon it'll just be like, let, let me, I'll scan your eyeballs and I'll send you the files. Real, I mean, yeah. who knows scan where we're my going. Chip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, does it get overwhelming having all that stuff stacking up? Like, you know, you have a lot of demos that you're not using for other stuff. Is it overwhelming or is it comforting to know that you have? It a, feels a good. It feels good because they, the the, the therapy, and the feeling of creating those alone and bouncing the file out of the template, yeah. the rough mix. Yeah. Uh, is gratifying in a way if if only if my family life, hears it yeah, when yeah. i'm in the dirt that's beautiful if, yeah. if they only if my grandkids hear it and say you know whatever uh if it's it's more about i'm, I'm looking it at exists. it it's more as about it just exists. creating creating yeah and if i would delete the whole thing and destroy it that's 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 um it would suck but that's okay well, that's that's kind of therapeutic too because go like take the whole template and con- yeah. control z you know it's un- i've the, lost the, a lot the, of contr- stuff and just delete it from undo it mistakes like that <clears throat> yeah and so, and in some way there is freedom in that there yeah, is because it's it's not it's because it not, makes you remember that you can still do shit what's not that really wasn't based the only thing you ever did that i was going to sell that to toby <clears throat> keith oh, right and yeah, he yeah. was going to make a million dollars because that's that's the odds of things like that happening, but but at least you I, know you're capable of doing, you know, even if you right. lost everything you ever did, right? That doesn't mean that your life is over musically. Yeah. Yeah. I'll just write more songs. Yeah. Well, the, the, when that's now happened, I, I I usually know very quickly whether or not that's worth going back to the piano and trying to remember the D minor, B flat, yeah. and the, and what the chords were. And if it's if it's a good good song, it usually stays with me here. Right. For a while after I mixed it and bounced it, come back to it in a few days, listen to it. If it gets yeah. stuck in my head, then I know. Right. And I usually listen to stuff when I'm picking up Jack and Carpool line. Yeah. So I've got, you know, 20 minutes waiting yeah. for parents to drive to the school. So and if it's I'm, stuck inside, and if you tinker at all, them, and you, a you've heard them, it 100 times probably. Yeah, and it might be one out of every 15 or 20. Yeah. But that's, that's better hey, than... If, if I would have just said, I'm just doing these three, yeah. and I'm going to spend hours on each one, that, that might have had the same feeling. of. Yeah. And then sometimes you go back and you add a bunch of stuff to a track, and it gets further away from yep. that first bounce yep. of just drums, 112 string, you're bass, like, no, all it and needs guitar. All one other thing, and, and then vocal. it'll be complete. And then by the time you're done, you're like, it's so far away from the original Then you like, idea. I put five things on the master bus and it's over compressed and i can't control z i don't care anymore i'm out right right i mean yeah. it's just it's to save those and to have them on a drive yeah. it's it's better than um to me these days it's better than trying to write this concept album and put all the pressure on yourself to book right. a studio somewhere else and to go okay i have t- three days four days yeah. and we have eight hour blocks where this has yeah. to happen there and it, it everything it's better line up right and i better feel voice that better thing just feel doesn't good. have to exist anymore it, 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 i appreciate it's that good too, and yeah. bad because yeah. any jerk off can start recording something that sounds okay sound wise but right. the music right. might be garbage right i think the, if if the music's good then I've any served, setup is gonna serve the song and serve yeah. the, the chapters you and the verses get, and you don't need well, the the big big box studio you, you don't man because it's you expensive. never did if you had really great songs anyways you know right. because like you know right. you got our guthrie out there on the back of a chug wagon and they got yeah. the reverse phonograph on there yeah i've revisited some of that stuff recently yeah and the first library of congress recording woody guthrie was man he 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 was tuned in to a lot of yeah. stuff that that about americans working yeah. and just a lot of the songs like the grand coulee dam and all these things that he went was paid by the corps of engineers or the uh uh, merchant marines t- to go and to document what was he was seeing at the grand coulee dam they're building these massive structures and he was paid to go document that through song yeah and i didn't i didn't know a lot of that i just thought An that, that's actual what, you troubadour know. I think yeah i mean he was he was a uh, folk he was yeah. a fo- i mean the, the definition of uh, folklore he was the johnny appleseed of songs you know yeah. like uh, <laughs> Yeah, going through the uh, land. He, and and he opened for strippers. He opened for <laughs> I a think lot. Every, of strippers. If you don't open for strippers, are you a <laughs> musician, really? Well, I think we all have to go through. Um, lately, there's been uh, a realization that you you have to go through. The, I talk about the timeline with my wife. Well, 
you talk about the timeline. You know, you, you, you have this, and you have, like, somebody, somebody pass, and you've got a dip, and then you've got um, a, a high point. You've put out a record, or you throw out a song. Um, that's life, and it's, it's, it's going to happen. And the, 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 the easier these days I can let the stuff roll off, the If you better. become used to the strife and the struggle, yeah. then you still know it exists, yeah. but it doesn't hinder you like it used yeah. to. It might inform right. the things that you do. Right. And create yeah. all the beautiful like things. Like these paintings, man. It's like each one of those probably has a place you were at exactly. in your mind. And, that, and, and some might be your favorite. Some might not be. Yeah, I don't but, even but, know if I like any of them. It was an well, exercise well, and an exercise. Yeah, and all those boards I paint, my wife has gone through and, and she was graded them basically and stored the, 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 the C and D ones and hung them in the house. The A and B ones she liked. That feels liked. good, huh? Yeah. And I'm like, wow, That's why, like why did you put that above the, the oven? And, and she's yeah, like, yeah. I like it. And then I look at it more and I'm like, I don't remember doing it. Yeah, There's yeah. a flash of 15 minutes and yep, some. Exactly. Some, uh, but it's it's that color therapy. And it's it's just it's, whatever the yeah. exodus of that thing inside of you. Right. And most people like sort of don't realize that, like, just because you're a musician, it's not just like, oh, I have to write songs like literally just man. I go I walk outside and rake leaves. Yeah. And that's a that's a form of expression for and me. it's got a rhythm to it. It's got a it's you physical. Know, yeah. And I do my best focusing when it comes to like creativity. Yeah. When I can't, when I'm not near a computer right. or. Right. And but the only thing is though, the only b uh, backwards part of that, and I'm, I wanted to ask if this happens to you before we wrap up. Um, I will have the idea, and I'm like, this. Is, it's only in my head. I don't have an instrument in my hand. I don't have right. a piece of paper. Right. I've got it, and I'm like, I'll remember that in three hours. And then I oh. get done with my stuff, and I come up. I don't. Yeah. I don't remember it at all. Yeah. Yeah, just saying. And it's lost to the universe, whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it'll be a tune. It'll be even just like um, like writing a sketch or a script, you know, j right. anything. I'm like, right. I'll remember that. I'll remember that joke. Yeah. No. That's when uh, the, let's talk about the computer being full of stuff with these. Yeah. With the phone, the voice memos. I'll put a, you can put it on a coffee mug like this uh -huh. just, and just go. And that's a great way to capture too because you can use that later. I have a ton it, of videos Run it through a preamp yeah. and, and, and you can – you can capture stuff with those phone mics pretty well, and, and at least it's getting at least it's getting yeah. yeah quick. It's a quick way I'll without put without reverse, yeah. putting mics up and I have stuff. So you know, many shitty videos of all the reverse camera me going, <laughs> yeah. you know, just trying yeah. to get a, 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 yeah. a, a yeah. an idea and together. You, and you may or may not go back to that, but there might be one of yeah. the ten or fifteen, twenty like, oh, yeah. that you go back and go, that's I've got to develop that. You know, sometimes and, I've done it right before I go to sleep. The next day I'm like, I yeah. don't remember any of that, yeah. but it was cool. Right. Right. So um, we can look forward to uh, wrapping up the trilogy. Yeah. And what's now? What's the name of it going to be? Uh, suffering. Suffering is the third one. You can find both of these on Spotify right now, right? They're on iTunes, Spotify, iTunes, Spotify, all everything. The, all uh, the YouTube. Services. There's some YouTube videos. There's the animated. There's, there's the Jeff Bezos music. Well, you know, these days you you go to CD Baby and you uh -huh. distribute through them. You pay them, and then you're in uh, 10 days your record goes to all the streaming okay. services so it's on it's on all the uh you have a website whatever. as well where they can order these um, vinyls and books well i just found it yeah well yeah i've got a tech working on the train wreck site which i was linking to to our merch well store. how can people get the book is that they can Amazon? order that by this evening at say seven o'clock chris should have that back online okay um at the trainwrecksband.com or jasonbiblemusic.com okay well this way this isn't coming out for a few days so i'm okay. sure it'll be up okay. by then well, Jason, I really appreciate you coming by. Thanks, Paxton. Uh, that was super fun. Right? The Nordic uh, Bear. Yes. <laughs> yes. Man. Yeah, man. Uh, we'll do it again soon. Uh, okay. There's there's plenty more to talk about. We just don't yeah. have any more. And time if I know hear of any musicians putting out records, I'll let them know. Yeah, I'd, yeah. Yeah. I'd love to interview anyone, man. Yeah. It's All been right. Good thank you guys. You. Uh, that was Jason Bible. We will see y'all next episode. All right.